Okay, so we have the uh, carpal compression test. So basically what you're doing in this position is you're just putting pressure with both of the thumbs over the carpal tunnel. And then you're holding for 30 seconds. So basically what are you doing there? There's three different ways that you test the neuro. Are we, are we uh, stretching the nerve? Are we reducing the size of the tunnel? Yes. Yeah. And then the other one is the is tapping. So you're looking for reproduction of the symptoms of the tingling. And then you have the pinch test, where what you're doing is you're asking the patient to pinch their fingers together like this. If they have a neurologic problem with the interosseous nerve, they're not going to be able to do that, and they're going to pinch like this. And then Sinelli's test, again, you're just tapping over the median nerve at the carpal tunnel. And then you're looking for tingling into the fingers. I'm doing for the um, carpal tunnel, the Catherine's doing the phalanx, so I'm doing the reverse phalanx, but we're going to do the reverse phalanx first. So the patient's seated, and um, basically what you want to do is just flex their, um, flex the wrist and the fingers so they're in, oh, excuse me, they're in extension, like that, and applying pressure to them. And what that does is put compression on the carpal tunnel, which um, compresses the median nerve, and you're looking for um, a reproduction of symptoms, so pain and tingling in the um, first three fingers and kind of going into the lateral ring finger. Or you can do it... Um, holding the patient's arm and just passively applying compression. <laughs> so the regular, just ordinary films, the non-reverse <laughs> <laughs> um, is basically the exact opposite. So you're bringing the dorsum of your um, hands together and different sources say different things. Some say just have the patient go like this and others um, have you actually you know, do it for them. And this one you're holding for a longer amount of time. You're going to hold that for a minute and you're looking for a reproduction of the symptoms um, through the thumb, index, middle finger, and the lateral aspect of the ring finger. And it's for um, to see whether or not they have a carpal tunnel. So you're compressing the nerve with this exercise. So the sign tests is you're testing for the Decorvian syndrome, um, which is came through the thumb here, the area. Um, they're going to have the patient grasp their thumb, close it into a fist, and then ulnar deviate the hand as they stretch out the arm. And the pain, sharp pain, you're looking for sharp pain through the hand. And then also, can you, you can force it into that position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Suspect that there could be an injury. Tap on this side here, and then I guess you know. Of course, you could just do the tenels at the same time. Then, right? And then you know you can also do compression. And then again, here's where it's talking about if you if you want to palpate, you can just kind of stabilize the the metacarpals or and then the wrist here or the radius and ulna. And then you can go in individually and palpate each of the individual carpals. Okay. And then the axial load, so that's for the metacarpal and the carpal joints. So you're stabilizing here and then you're compressing here, it's the axial load. And then if you're going to do the grind, because there you're focusing more on the metacarpal carpal joints, so you're coming in here, I'll hold up so you can see over here. And then you're actually doing the grinding. Okay. And then Murphy's sign, you can do that, right? You're looking for this one to be dropped down lower between these, and then the structure, you're looking for this one to be dipped down. And then ligament stability, you're, you're basically checking the fingers, and obviously here you're going to have more abduction, adduction in these joints versus you can come here and test this. It's basically like valgus and varus for the fingers. And then, of course, you could also do it this here, like a kind of like a drawer sign, which we'll talk more about in there. So you're just working through. Obviously, if you're suspecting injury to a particular area, you're going to focus on that area. Right? So you can pretty much practice that on your own fingers. And then Finkelstein's test, you can either have the patient actively do it, so put your thumb inside your fist and then turn your fist that way. 
and then you can add to it. So it's a contractile tissue test, and in this case, we're stretching it passively at its end range of motion. So what's, what's another test you could do? If we wanted to do like an active resisted muscle testing, what could I do for that? What's the action of those muscles? Remember the patient is aggravated, aggravated by extension of the thumb? So I want you to hold your thumb back up like this. I'm going to have, press down, don't let me move. So here, that's just another way of active resistive muscle testing to detect those muscles and then you're looking for pain in that area too. The Bonnell-Littner test, we're looking for this. This is the joint that, that's in question. The patient says, I can't bend my fingers like that. So when we're in this position, just think of the interosseous or the lumbrical muscles as they're, they're back like this. And then if I can't bend it here, I don't know if it's because of the interosseous muscles or if it's the joint capsule right here. So if I flex here at this MCP joint and, and I still can't move it, then I know this joint capsule is bad. But if I move it here like that, I've relaxed the interosseous muscles, and if now I can move it, then we know the joint capsule is okay, but it's a problem with the interosseous muscles. And then tenels, right? <coughs> You're going to tap right here. It's basically a little bit distal to this crease that you see on the wrist here. Because it's going to be over the carpal bone. So you're going to actually be distal to the radius and the ulna. So you're going to be in this area here. Kind of just at the base of the thumb. And then phalens. It's like this. So think of this one as more of a compromising of the tunnel where you're compressing the nerve in there versus the reverse phalanx or the prayer test is more of stretching of that nerve. So you can do it this way like so. Again, you're holding it for about a minute and then you're looking for reproduction of symptoms. But then you have reverse phalanx or prayer, prayer test. Then just go ahead and put your, yeah, so you're doing it like this, right? Then you're looking for reproduction of symptoms there. Or if you want to do it one hand at a time, you're going to hold it like so. And then again, you can put some pressure on there. You can palpate the nerve or tap on it while you're doing the test at the same time. And then there's the carpal compression test where you're basically just putting pressure on the carpal tunnel. And then pinch tests. Right, you can do that on their own, right? Just have the patient pinch like this, type, put your fingertips together. If they, if they do it like this, then there's problems. And then this piano key sign, like I said, this one's not in the notes, but basically what you're doing is you're, you're, you can stabilize here at the lateral side or the radial side of the wrist, and then you're pressing down on the distal ulna. And of course, yeah, there's going to be some movement there, but you're looking for excessive movement, and you're comparing one side to the other. So it's like, you know, if this is a big piano key and you're pressing down here, like you're playing the piano. You're going to practice range of motion of the uh, wrist and the elbow. So the elbow, you know, it's basic, it's a hinge joint, so you're going to basically put the fulcrum here at the F condyle. There's the fixed arm, here's the mobile arm. Down it like this. And then for pronation and supination, Usually you can put a pen in their hand, but if you happen to have a sword with you, you can always use that. So this fixed arm is going to be parallel to the, to the ground or, or the floor or whatever. And then you're going to line this up with whatever you have in your hand, either some this or pen or even holding the thumb up like that. So let me demonstrate that. Hold like that. Okay. And then I want you to, this is going to be stabilized on a, on a desk surface or something like that. And then once you come up, so you measure this way. And then once you turn your palm down, you measure that way. Okay? So you can practice those two 